Hello everyone and welcome to Felix's Space Time. A while ago I was at the Gone Wild Festival here in the UK and I got to meet and interview a good friend of mine, Nick Corston, who runs an amazing organisation called Steamco. Steamco's goal is to raise a million quids to inspire a million kids to aim higher than high, powered by their creativity and our communities. You can donate to his amazing cause at www.steamco.org.uk slash rmillion23. I hope you enjoy the interview and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hi Nick, thank you so much um, for, for agreeing to do an interview with me. Um, for everyone who's watching, could you tell everyone a bit about yourself? Well, I think I should say thank you to you, Felix, actually, for coming with your dad here for the second time this summer, making rockets and tirelessly helping us out. So let's start with a flying fist bump before we go any further. I'm just a dad and I'm no expert on anything, to be quite honest. I certainly know a fraction of what you know about the space world and I'm full of respect for what you do. I'm just a dad that came to a festival with my family 12, 13 years ago, Camp Festival. And I thought, I want this in my kids' school. So we went back to the school and they said yes. And we got parents, teachers, business people, local artists together. And we ran a creativity day. Because I think creativity, as Sir Ken Robinson has said in his famous TED speech, is he said that creativity is now as important as literacy. So I've had a background in the creative industries. Um, so I thought, hey, let's start running creativity days. We did that in my son's school for seven or eight years. I then started as a non-profit community interest company, Steamco. The rest is history. I haven't actually been home for a couple of months. I've been flying around the country in Starship 22. So, yeah, that's me, I'm afraid. Nothing terribly exciting. Yeah, um, we've got this uh, trailer just here. You talk a lot about um, getting more of these on the road. And what's the goal for that and what are you aiming to do? That's a great in question, the, thanks. No, I mean, we've... I do a lot of stuff, we have a lot of fun, but we really need to have some impact. There are schools, there are communities across the country, across the world even, that really do need this. And creativity and the arts are often cut out. So that, that what we call the art truck, is, it contains everything you need to run a creativity day in a school, at a fete or a festival, but most importantly, where the community can come together and run that event, facilitated by a mini-me, if you like, we call them steamsters, um, and that's a challenge, scaling it. So I'm keen to get three of those on the road to see if we can scale this, and then see if we can't roll them out across the country. What, well, I mean, what do you think of the format of the little truck and what we've been doing this weekend? Yeah, I think it's actually a really good idea, kind of having all the stuff you need for, um, for a creativity day, like you said, and getting them out across the country, that's in there there's everything you need for to set these things up so i think that's an amazing idea we've got rocket kits we've got cardboard modeling kits we've got coding kits we've got robot kits we've got inventing kits we've got just about everything really something and, it, and that's the important thing here um felix really i mean I've, i'm wearing a t-shirt that says i love art it doesn't just mean i like throwing paint around seth godin said to me once that art is what we call it when what we do connects us to somebody else so we have to help our kids find their passion. We call it their art. It could be painting, photography, cooking, coding, making things from cardboard, dancing, design, DJing, racing cars, robots, or heaven forbid, the other R word. What's that? Oh, Felix, I'm stuck. What's the other R word? Rockets. Yeah. <laughs> the art of rockets. What's not to like about firing rockets? Let's face it, you've seen the families, the parents, the kids yeah. this weekend. I mean, it's been great, is not it? Yeah, it really brings everyone, everyone together. Um, I know you've, um, you've made a the film made about you, um, about the F1 cars that your logo has been put on. Can you tell us um, a bit more about that? Absolutely. Blown away by that. Basically, um, one of McLaren's sponsors, a US tech firm called Smartsheet, um, they're in the business of helping um, companies um, do better work, basically. And they, they take their logo off the McLaren Formula One car every once in a while and replace it with a non-profit in that area. So they've done it on Australia with, um, with uh, a science charity working with uh, communities out there in, Abra in, um, in Australia. They've done it in America with an organization working with young urban males, particularly around coding and entrepreneurial skills. And I guess they scraped the barrel and they came up with me in the UK and they found this crazy cranky dad who flies around the country in a starship and, and makes rockets amongst other things. So yeah, they. They put our logo on the front of the car, which just blew me away. But not only that, their superstar driver, Lando Norris, came into a school with us and fired rockets, made rockets, and took one of the young people back to the McLaren Technical Center for, for a, a ride and a day of his dreams, where he was also joined by families from Shropshire, Cornwall, and Yorkshire. Because I want to ignite a creativity revolution, mirroring the industrial revolution, which has obviously been and gone, but which obviously set us and the world up, Shropshire was the birthplace of that, and that's where I'm from. So we want to ignite this creativity revolution by getting our first truck in Shropshire, the second one in Cornwall, because that's where a chap called Richard Trevithick, an inventor, came from. 
He invented the steam train, literally, but had it built in Shropshire. Oh, wow. And Yorkshire is where our third truck will be because Yorkshire provided the coal. And for us, art is the coal of the creativity revolution. So that's what we want to do. We want to prove that this craziness can scale. And if it can, roll it out across the country. And if it can't, I better go and get myself a job driving a van or something. I don't know what an old man like me could do at this stage of life, to be honest. <laughs> I want to go back in time a bit and um, talk about how you first created Steamco. What was that kind of spark moment for thinking, I want to get these trailers put out and I want to inspire people? That's a great question. I mean, for me, it was going to a festival like this and seeing this creativity and with a background in the creative industries, with a background cutting and making, I, I was a Blue Peter child. Um, I thought, I want this in my kids' school, as any parent would, but I'm one of those parents, as many are as well, that made it happen. I went back to the school and said to the head teacher, we want to run these creativity days, and she said yes. And, and the rest is history, really. I mean, we, it was coming to a festival and thinking, why should this just be a couple of days in the summer? Why shouldn't it be once or twice a year in the school? And, and we've worked with schools across the country now, and uh, yeah, it's been a fantastic journey. I could not have made this up, as I say in the McLaren film. I, I live a life full of purpose and I'm grateful for that opportunity and I think gratitude is one of the most important virtues and I'm grateful to have discovered that. <laughs> Amazing. I want to talk a bit about what um, you've done here today. We're here at the Gone Wild Festival with Bear Grylls. Um, you've got this whole little setup. Can you tell me a bit about that, launching the rockets and everything? Well, this is one of the first times actually they've allowed us to, to land hashtag Starship 22 on the showground. We've had a fantastic pitch. So we've got children making and firing paper rockets with their parents, the disco dads, we call them the meddling mums. Oh gosh, that's going to cause trouble, isn't it? Um, but we're just a little bit of fun. They're designing and printing art activist t-shirts. Maybe they're doing a heart for an I Love Art t-shirt or just doing their own painting and drawing and printing on a t-shirt. It's, it's not rocket science. And we've been making things from cardboard. We've made our sea monster, which is modelled on an oil rig, but it's an art rig. It's drilling for inspiration because oil is so yesterday, as I think most people would probably agree and we need to be drilling for inspiration and creativity is that future and, and this was actually inspired by a real oil rig or a gas rig that the government put on the beach near near here in Western Supermare as part of a national festival of creativity. They spent 10 million pounds putting an oil rig on the beach as an example an artwork to make people think about reuse of industrial objects to make them think about the environment and recycling and weather but they scrapped it after eight weeks. They literally built it 10 million pounds and they scrapped it after eight weeks because they said well it's an artwork you hang them on the wall you take them down and we said oh no so we launched a petition to save it and as you can see behind us we've saved it as a cardboard model a cgi model towering above us here 100 meters tall with our starship on the top and we launched that and we landed and we have all sorts of fun so cardboard coding cardboard t-shirts and rockets really that's what we've been doing here and, and yeah and the rockets that's another story but <laughs> I mean, you talk a lot about you've got a book here, Rocket Boys. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, this is what I have to say. Look, Felix, you are the expert on rockets and space and the space industry, and I'm humbled by your knowledge. Uh, but my journey into rocketry was rather accidental. My dad gave me a book that he found in the Oxfam charity bookshop that he volunteers in called Rocket Boys by Homer Hickam. Uh, he said it's the best book he'd ever read, and he gave it to me. And, and he said, I've emailed the author, but he hasn't got back to me. And I looked it up and I said, well, good luck with that, Dad. He sold like six million copies of this in 10 languages. You know, if you've ever write to a famous author, don't expect a reply. Anyway, I'll be honest with you, I had a glass of Merlot one night and was on Twitter and I managed to connect with the author, Homer, and he gave me permission to take the story into British schools and festivals. So Homer's been a rock and he's, he's offered to be a patron of a project we want to run called the Rocket Kids Club. Um, so there's the book Rocket Boys. There's a movie called October Sky, which is an anagram. Have you read this book? I haven't, not yet, no. Have you got a copy? I'll have to get one. You've got one now, mate. That's on Thank me. You. That's my pleasure because you're as much of an inspiration to me and your work and your support as, as home has been. And I know that Jared Eisenman, when he first launched his Inspiration 4 mission, he was very generous and, and supported us with a tour that we did. And I know he's been very supportive to you. And I, I think the Cohen Steam Co doesn't stand for company. It's a mirror of Eisenbard, Kingdom Brunel and his steam company, if you like. But the Co stands for collaboration. We're a non-profit community enterprise called Steam Collaboration CIC because for me the key to this is everybody coming together and collaborating and for me and to be able to collaborate with you from a different generation, for me to be able to collaborate with some like Homer there in West Virginia, to be able to collaborate with some like Jared who is so busy but his support means so much and we all need to come together for these projects and, and for our kids and for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah, Jared's support has been, been amazing and um, yeah. 
I want to talk a bit about, you've got um, a launch here at four, delayed a bit by the, the rainy weather. Can you tell us a bit about that? You'll be doing a talk with them. You've got some, you're going to have some people listening. Oh, well, I hope we get an audience the second time. We got rained off at three o'clock. But yeah, we've, um, obviously we've been firing these little paper rockets. These are fired with a, a very high pressure system, 120 PSI which is designed and developed by a couple of guys in the US called Rick and Keith. And I like to say they developed it in their garage, but they probably developed it at work. But I like to think in the way that the Apple Mac was designed and built in a garage, I like yeah. to think that those guys developed their launcher in a garage. But, you know, to see parents making these rockets, these can go 200 meters, you've seen them, 200 feet over yeah. that tree there. It's phenomenal. So we'll get rid of that quickly. But no, that, and that's got a little pinata tail. These are the little rockets that we fire off. So we're going to be launching one of these little black powder rockets. Super little system, um, Estes rockets, 10, 15 pounds a pop. And you know, people have no idea. I mean, I'm, obviously we're hyping it up that we're launching our Starship model behind, but we actually do launch one of these. But I think the, uh, the, there's the surprise, the disappointment is quickly dispelled when this takes off. And what you've got to think is when I do this in a school, there are kids who don't come to festivals. There are some kids in Plymouth, which is a seaside naval town. There are kids in Plymouth who've never been to the sea. Hard to believe. So a day like this, with a rocket like this going off, those kids will never forget it in many cases. I worked with a school in Chester and the head teacher there said that a child in that school had special needs, additional needs, had a very, very distressed home setting and lots of issues and lots of top up funding and had never spoken in that school until this rocket went off. You know, this is, this is a powerful, a very, very powerful engagement platform and, you know, I'm no expert, but there's nothing not to like about rockets going off. So, yeah, we'll be doing that at four o'clock. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Amazing. You also talk a lot about cardboard um, and you've got some, some tools here. Can you tell us all about this you use to make this um, the cardboard sea monster? Well, these are, our, yeah, these are our little screw sets. Yeah, we get these in from uh, Australia, little blue plastic screws. I'll have to throw that to the camera so you can see that. But no, we've got a little saw here, which we use to saw the cardboard a fold roller and then the little screwdriver so we can literally make anything. I, I threw um, Sea Monster together last night with some cardboard from a, a well-known Swedish furniture saw that I ransacked on the way through and I can't believe it's actually stood up actually. We had a very heavy rain shower last yeah. night but uh, it stood up. But yeah, I, I, there's a lovely phrase, cardboard is the gateway drug to making. And I say to parents, give kids cardboard. Don't necessarily just give them screens and tablets all the time. Obviously, tech's going to be part of their life. But cardboard is the gateway drug to making. Give them a box. Give them one of these little screw sets and get them making things. So, yeah, I mean, you can't beat it. Rocket science, one minute, cardboard, creativity. But it's a little bit of everything, really. Amazing. I've got one last question yeah. for you. Quite simple. What are your plans for the future with Steam Co? Goodness me. Well, I'm a bit of an old man now. I've got 10 good years left in me, I think. I haven't been home for two months, barely. But really what I want to do with Steam, I want to prove that this can scale. Um, I'm hoping somebody will match fund the first uh, round of money. We're trying to raise a million quids to inspire a million kids by getting 23 of our art trucks on the road. The first three, as I say, in Shropshire, Cornwall and Yorkshire. My mother passed away last year, so the first one in Shropshire is going to be dedicated to her because she and my father used to run arts and crafts schemes, as I was reminded by the nursing staff as, as she passed. So I want the first one to be there. So I'm looking for somebody to ideally match fund all or part of the first 250,000, which will fully fund the first three trucks, which means that schools don't have to pay because they just don't have the funding for this. They have other priorities in a very stretched budget system and to be able to go to fates and festivals. I was looking earlier, I thought, just imagine if this was happening in three places today and I wasn't there. Imagine if it was happening in 23 places today and I wasn't there. There's only one of you, there's only one of me, but you know, that's my ambition, to scale this or to see if it can scale. If it can't, I better brush up on my driving and get myself a van job, I think. <laughs> Amazing, well thank you so much for agreeing to an interview. I'm really excited for your talk and the model rocket launch later. Thank you, Felix. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks for coming down and thanks, thanks. to your dad as well, Martin. You've been fantastic, thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.